hallelujah go ahead and just worship him in the spirit go ahead and just speak in the holy ghost go ahead and speak in the spirit one of the prophetic instructions god has given to us this year is that you will pray in tongues you will pray in tongues more in 2023 and you will love him and everything will begin to work together for your good according to his purpose and intent for you this season can you just go ahead and just worship in the holy ghost Zike eno zibre no zive e tu zetiaka e zeni e kolo zibre tu vetine e shuba atiaka. I'm not a victim of circumstances. Many eke e zike ne e bero tu zetine e kiaka e zebilo zibre tu vetiti e tiaka. I'm not a victim of adversity. Many eke e zike ne e kolo zizie teka zene e koba atu zetie keni eke. I am a kingly priest. Lift up your voice and pray out in the spirit. I walk in dominion. Saka, a yene kile bereteka. I walk in victory. Isekene, isekene. Soli kile bereteka. Soli kile bereteka. Sobene kile beretu zetiaka. Sheme koba atu zetiaka. Sekene, ala kobele ti nekiaka. Declare receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I rule as king in the realms of life. Shekineke, shekineke paro siaka. Shike lebereteka, shike lebereteka, shike lebereteka. I experience supernatural shift. Sheye kibo sivateka. Lift your hands and give him praise. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give him praise everywhere. Please have your seat. God designed it that your life should be a testimony. God designed it that your life should be a sign and a wonder. God wants to use you to display his glory and his excellence in this dark age so many can be drawn to him and that is why god is more committed for you having harvest of testimonies than you are even committed to it but one of the ways to multiply testimonies in your life is to learn to share testimonies is to learn to proclaim the praise of god when he does something in your life many of you got testimonies last sunday I want you to share your testimonies. I want to encourage you to do so. There's this young lady. You know, I prayed for people that were looking for a job. At the end of the service, she came to meet me. She said she can't even count the number of places she has, she has put her CVs, both for remote jobs and all that. Guess what? Just on Wednesday after Sunday service, a company from Europe. She told me for, she, she can't even count again. And maybe... I've not even seen her because she has to just give her testimony. <laughs> and God did it for her. I want you to share your testimonies. When you share your testimonies, God increases testimonies in your life. But when you hide your testimonies, <laughs> you don't give God reasons to give you more testimonies. Hallelujah. I had to begin that way because of what we're about to share today. I may become today. This week has been a week of uh, too much calmness in my environment. We'll be looking at the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Israel. Or the commonwealth of Zion, where the true Israel of God. Psalms 87. I want to welcome all those online. You're welcome to church. Psalms 87. 
Thank you, Father. Just play the keyboard for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit, this morning. Honor your name. Glorify your person. Cause us to display your glory and your praise in the nations of the earth. You've put your name upon us. You've put your name upon us. We bear your name. That name is an inheritance. That name makes us legal. Legal sons. To share in the inheritances of Zion. To share in the commonwealth of Zion. Cause the anointing that teaches us to be at work. Cause the spirit of revelation and of wisdom. Let these things not just be letters, but by your spirit imprint them in our souls, imprint them in our mind, imprint them. Honor yourself as never before. Do that only you can do. And take back the glory and the praise in our lives in this season. Anytime your prayer starts with, Oh God, my Father, may your name be hallowed. You've committed God into the matter. May your name be sanctified. God wants his name to be glorified in the midst of people. God wants his name to be glorified in the midst of the assembly. If you're always looking forward to the next testimony you will share, you will never lack testimonies. He said that a man may see your good works. May see the expressions of God's goodness in your life. And that they may glorify him who is in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalms 87. His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. There are many things we may not be able to say again. So you pick the messages of Wednesday and Friday. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. I will make mention of Egypt and Babylon to those who know me. Behold, O Philistia and Tia, with Ethiopia, this one was born there. And of Zion it will be said, this one and that one were born in her. And the Most High himself shall establish her. The Lord will record when he registers the peoples. This one was born there. Every one of us have dual citizenship. If you are in Christ. And the first citizenship is a citizenship of being in Zion. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22. And anytime we talk about the common wealth of any nation, is the shared treasures, shared profits, shared benefits, shared privileges that everyone that is in that nation has right to. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. And God says, your name is in the registrar of those that are born in Zion. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly 
and the church of the firstborn who are what? Registered in heaven. You can be in a nation and not be a citizen of that nation. What it means is also you can walk into the church environment and not be a citizen of Zion. Show that scripture. Those ones whose names are registered in heaven. To God the judge of all. To the spirits of just men. Made perfect. Verse 24. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaks better things. Than the blood, blood of Abel. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. We are not going to be citizens of heaven in the future. In the eternal future. We are already citizens of heaven. And from there we are waiting for our savior. I'm not going to be a citizen of heaven one day. Citizen of Zion. This heaven is the heavenly Jerusalem. I'm already a citizen. And that's why we are talking about the common world of Zion. Philippians chapter 3 verse 20. Show it. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait. I'm already a citizen. I'm eagerly waiting for the return of my Savior. I'm already a citizen. It's like some of us have never gone to Abuja before. That you've not gone to Abuja before doesn't make it that you're not a citizen of Nigeria. Abuja is just the stronghold of our capital city. But you're already a citizen of Nigeria. Having been delivered from the kingdom of darkness and being translated into the kingdom of the son of his love. You're already there. You're already a citizen. And there is no system that is as perfect as Zion in the matters of the welfare and privileges of the citizens of Zion. There is no system like that. There is no system. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9. Then we will roll. Moreover, the profit of the land is for all. This is what we would call the common wealth of a nation. That the profit, the treasures, by right, one should be able to prosper more in his nation than in a foreign land. Why? In your nation, you have no limitations or restrictions. There are no reservations that you don't have right of access to. But once you leave your nation to a foreign land, you begin to realize that there are certain things that you don't have right to just because you are a foreigner. There are certain privileges you don't have right to just because you are a foreigner. Until you become a citizen of that nation, there are things you will never have access to. And so, even if you talk to our brothers that have traveled abroad, they will always tell you there is no place like home. The freedom, the liberty of movement and the way you operate, you will never find it anywhere outside your own land. Never. Never. 
you will always be known as a foreigner in a foreign country. And there are certain things you can never be qualified to have access to. Sometimes uh, if you can stay there and one day they ask you to they deport you, tell you your time is up, your residency is over, this and that. I'm trying to use natural things to communicate spiritual things. In Zion, there are things that once you are born in Zion, it's your right. Except you are not even aware of them. And everyone that is born in Zion, by default, is a global citizen on the face of the earth. There are five major common wealth of Zion. And we're going to be looking at it today. Five. Once you are able to understand these dimensions of the common wealth of Zion, any land you step into, any city you step into, any nation you walk into, you just know you have the larger portion here, even above the indigenous of that nation. That's why covenant works better, even in a strange land. I'm just in between. Should I mention again the 10 major covenants you have before we move into the commonwealth of Zion, or should I just push into the commonwealth of Zion? Okay, let me mention them again. There was something we were teaching on Friday. I'll just mention the 10 because some of you were not here. And we'll look at some things. The first covenant of promise. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 2, sorry, verse 11. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called on circumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of what? Covenant of what? Promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. No, go back. Just go back to that verse 12. On Friday, we looked at this covenant of promise. And today, we want to look at the commonwealth of Zion. So, I'll just mention this covenant of promise that will step into commonwealth of Israel. Now, go to verse 13. But now in Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of commandments or contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. Verse 16. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, verse 17. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Can we read it together, verse 19 together? I want to go. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners. Please pause. Before we were strangers and foreigners. And because of it, we didn't have right of access. We didn't have right of inheritance. There were covenant promises we didn't have access to. We were foreigners. We were strangers. And these things were reserved to only citizens. But now he says, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners. Can we go on? One, two, go. But what? Fellow citizens with the what? Saints and what? Members of the household of what? God. So let, just go ahead. Let me just mention 10 major promises of covenant that you have right to i'll mention them i'll mention the scripture by the side you'll go and read up the scriptures the first one is the covenant of divine health and healing is a right 
for everyone born in Zion to operate in divine health and healing. Isaiah 33 verse 24. 1 Peter 2 verse 24. It says, He himself took your infirmities and your sicknesses. And by his stripe you were what? Healed. He said, If the same spirit of Christ that raised him from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit shall do what? Quicken your dead doomed body. The second is the covenant of divine protection. Divine protection. Psalms 34 verse 7, as the angels, he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Psalms 125 verse 2, as the mountain surrounds Zion, so the Lord's glory surrounds you. Proverbs 18 verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are safe. The third is the covenant of fruitfulness. Covenant of fruitfulness. Exodus chapter 23 verse 26. There shall be none barren in Zion. Psalms 1 verse 3. You shall bear your fruits in your season. Jeremiah 17 verse 8. Even in the year of drought, you shall not know it, for you shall not cease from bearing your fruit. The fourth is the covenant of prosperity. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. I am he that empowers you to create wealth that I may establish the covenant with you. I wish above all things, thought John 1 verse 2, that you prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. Covenant of life and longevity. Psalms 91 verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy you. I will bless you out of Zion, Psalms 128, and you will see your children's children. I will bless you out of Zion, and you will see your children's children. You have a covenant of longevity, covenant of life. The sixth covenant is the covenant of peace. Ezekiel 54 verse 10. He said, even if the mountains have been moved, my covenant of mercy with you will stand. Show them Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 26. Ezekiel 37 verse 26. Please show them. Ezekiel 37 verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will establish them and multiply them. And I will make them my sanctuary in the midst of the nations. That means when the nations want to know where God resides, when the nations want to see the manifest presence of God in a place, the nations will look for men he has made covenant of peace with. Show them Ezekiel. Chapter 34, verse 25. There is a covenant of peace that works with you that no matter what is going on in the nations, no matter what is going on around you, there is an inner peace that is strength from Zion that gives you victory. Anytime you see a believer that doesn't have inner rest within, he always loses battles. He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is dead on him. Let the mountains be moved. Let the city be shaken. He is not perturbed. That's how you know a covenant man. Mark a blameless one. A covenant one. His end shall be what? Peace. You have a covenant of peace. He said the Lord by all means. At all costs. In all places. Will grant you peace. Because believers have not known this covenant of peace. That's why wild wolves eat them. Some people are already fidgeting concerning 2023. Anytime darkness hits anywhere, there is inner calmness with men in covenant with God. They know they are the ones on rescue. Mission. Have you not noticed that anytime a ship is sinking, there are people that are sent to go and help others out. Anytime there is a pool, there are pool whatever, pool guards or what. 
lifeguards. You are not the one sinking. God has positioned you to help many others that are sinking in life to be pulled out. So no matter what is going on in your environment, the one that does not have inner peace, can he go rescuing others? Show them that Ezekiel 34 verse 25. I have to pay attention to this one before we push on. I have covenant of peace. I can't be moved. He said, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world for you. In all these things, we are more than conqueror. It leaves you with an understanding. I gain victory before I enter the battlefield. I will make a covenant of peace with them. And because of the covenant of peace I have made with them, I will cause wild beasts to cease from the land. And they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. They say a city eats up people, not for you. They say a territory consumes people, not for you. They say a land swallows up its inhabitants, not for you. Because the covenant of peace is at work in you. The seventh is the covenant of dominion. Romans chapter 4 verse 13. You are heir of the world. By promise. God promised Abraham a land. And Abraham said, I'm, I'm going to be sure I'm going to have that land. And God said, let us enter into a covenant. Anytime you walk into a place. Because it's true faith. That these dominion expressions are experienced. Start with your mouth. I'm not someone to be pushed to the corner in this city. I'm not someone to be pushed in the corner in this industry. The covenant of dominion is at work in me. I'm a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. This is the right of everyone in Zion. The eighth is the covenant of blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 8. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He has blessed you. Show Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Listen to me. We make some of those prayers. But it's actually a prayer in error in the new covenant. For you to say God bless me. But we make it sometimes because of lack of words. Maybe because of the way we want to communicate to God what is in our heart. What we do in the New Testament is to activate and walk in the blessing. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ every so it's time to activate and walk in the blessing because if you are in Zion you are already a blessed man and blessing is an empowerment to succeed tell your neighbor I can't fail in anything at all my marriage can't fail my business can't fail my career can't fail I just prosper Though my beginning is little, it always increases because of the blessing upon me. The ninth is a covenant of mercy and favor. Isaiah 56, Romans 8, 38 to 39, Isaiah 55, verse 3, Lamentations 3, verse 23. His mercies are new. Every morning, his favor upon you cannot be removed. Let's, let's look at Isaiah 54. And I'll mention the tent, then we push the order. I, I know why I mentioned these things. 
Imagine someone is in a, has an awareness that these forces of covenant is backing him. Isaiah 54. Let's read from verse 9. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah will no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I will not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my favor, my kindness, my goodness, this is what God said to David, shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord that has chosen to do what? Have mercy on you. There is a covenant of mercy that makes the favor of God to remain on you. The favor that Jonathan experienced even when Jonathan, somebody blackmailed Jonathan, not Jonathan, the son of Jonathan, Mephibosheth, thinking that David will hurt Mephibosheth, David cannot steal because there's a covenant of mercy that the favor of David will be on Mephibosheth. You can't talk me out of grace. You can't talk me out of the help of God. What can separate me from the love of God in Christ. Can devils. Can persecutions. Can situations. Can tribulations. No matter what comes up. And you are trying to tell me. Maybe God does not love you again. Maybe the mercy of God is not upon you again. I tell you neither height nor depth. Neither low nor width. There is nothing. Both in time and in time to come. That can separate me. From the mercy of God. And in that mercy, in all things, I'm what? More than conqueror. The tent is a covenant of eternal life in Christ. John 3, verse 16. See these 10 covenant promises. It's not like if God wants to do, he will do. God is committed, bound by oath for you to have these realities. If you are not experiencing any of them, see some human beings, they say, I don't enjoy favor. Which one is that you don't enjoy favor? I don't enjoy mercy. It's a language that is foreign to Zion. They that don't know you will run to you. They you do not know, those you do not know, you call. It's a language we don't understand in Zion. That I'm not operating in favor. Kala hashi Eternal life is a God kind of life. That which Adam lost, even something much more than that has been given to you. Now, I want to ask you a question before we push into commonwealth of Zion. Maybe the next 10 minutes, I'll see what I will do. We'll complete the rest within the second semester. Do you think if these forces of covenant is at work in you, which the first principle of activating covenant is to operate in faith. That you will walk into any place and feel less of yourself. That's why the Jews knew anywhere they walk into that they are the ones in control. They knew. How come believers have low self-esteem? How come believers have inferiority complex? How come believers see themselves as second class, even third class citizens of the earth? Walking beggarly 
on the face of the earth. You are the help of your boss. You walk into any company, you are not someone they want to lose. The day you want to walk out, they plead with you. If the dimensions of Zion is at work in you, you walk into any city, the blessing of that city just walked in. You walk with your head up, not on the floor. God has a man in your city and you are that man. God has a woman in your city and you are that woman. Covenant makes you know that God can slaughter people for your sake. As I walked into Enugu, if you see the burden of Enugu in my heart, not to grow this church, oh, because I'm a covenant man. The responsibilities of the city is on my shoulder. That's who you are. You can't live in a city 10 years, live in a city 12 years, live in a city 15 years, and the people that matter in that city don't recognize you. Let them bring you as a slave. Come as one of the least. Let there be a consciousness in your spirit. Let there be an awareness in your soul that you are the help of that city. And once that awareness comes, you will start from where you are being a help and a blessing to that city. Why many never arise is that this mentality and these forces are not following them. And even as I'm talking, someone is still trying to say, don't you know who I am? I'm the least, I'm the poorest, I'm the weakest. Once you understand covenant, you respect men, but you never see yourself as one on the floor. Live this way this year and see how much progress you will make. Business must work. I'm not hoping it will work. Let's now dive into the five major commonwealth of Zion. The first wealth of Zion is that God is our inheritance. Psalm 16 verse 5. Hi. That this whole being that is high above is my portion. Like God does not relate with you. You own God. You possess God. Is it, is it hard to pick? David owns me. David has a portion. The first inheritance of David is his father. He can be everybody's pastor, everybody's mentor, everybody's leader, but he is my husband. 
The first inheritance of Pastena to me is not what I give to her. Is that she owns me. That's why they said they, they are without God. Show that scripture. Oh Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my God, God, you maintain my Lord. Verse 16. Can we read together? I want to go. man that knows that God is his portion once he walks into any place the good portion of the land is his let me explain what this means Abraham had a, a, a nephew and there was a little conflict between Abraham and his nephew and Abraham said to his nephew the land is before us choose anyone because the Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my defense. My buckler. My exceedingly great reward. Choose anyone. See, even if I go and become a woodwork guy, I will prosper. Anything I do. I, I came from Absu. Pastor students. In a bush. There is no pastor in that campus that prospered like me except Pastor Meiji of Christ's embassy. The land is not the issue. The Lord is my portion. And Lord looked and chose the good part. Any part I take is the good part. Have you not seen men go into the wilderness and people follow them to the wilderness? They possessed God. Have you not seen men prosper in places people say no one can prosper there? This is what is called that the Lord is with Joseph. The Lord is with Ephraimah. The Lord is with Pascal. The Lord is with. If God be for us, who can be against us? The first thing God signed out to you is himself and he proved it by allowing his spirit to live in you Kai, it, it makes me go psalms 82 when I see Christians putting their face on the floor I just wonder don't they know they are citizens of Zion do they even know the wealth that has been willed to them Psalm 32 verse 1 God stands in the congregation of the mighty. You are still wondering if you are mighty. He judges. Amongst the gods. 
How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Think about it. Defend the poor. Even if you have 10 naira in your account, he said, defend the poor. You don't know what responsibility is. Responsibility means if there's one plate of food in my house, the children eat. And they think it's because I have food to eat. That's why I gave them that one to eat. I am a defender of the poor. So my source cannot run dry. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Verse 5. Deliver the poor from the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know. They do not understand. They walk in ignorance of who they are. So the foundations of the earth, the foundations of their environment, the foundations of their engagement is unstable. When Mount Zion cannot be moved. Turn the next verse. I say to you, our God, and all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7. What brought you into this is because you possess God. He said, if you don't understand this, you will die like ordinary men and fall like one of the princes. Verse 8. But look at the end point. That's why I told you, every covenant man and all this is we are studying, it will not work for you. Like the only reason it will work for you is that you walk into any place, you take responsibility. No matter how much I say it, it will not work. The only reason for the common world of Zion is for you to rescue cities, rescue neighborhood, rescue nations, rescue people. If you are not interested, forget it. We are ambassadors to nations. We are diplomats to cities. Once we walk into any place, we want to recover the earth. We want to recover the city. We want to recover the neighborhood. It won't. Have you not read through the Old Testament, the ones that are type? So I came to Enugu to live for myself and my family. The dimensions of the commonwealth of Zion will not reach you. I came to Enugu to help these people. You see another dimension. He said, the ones that seek the welfare of the land has come. The second is the unsearchable riches of Christ. My second service will look at what it means. Bow down your heads.